In ninth grade, I moved to a new school. I started classes, found my group of friends, and everything was going great. Then, around October, came the time of parent-teacher conferences. Now, I wasn't worried, as I had been doing pretty well in all of my classes. So, my mom and I, we meet with my first teacher, and it's nothing unusual, grades, assignments, homework, until he goes, one thing I would like for Cholpan is to be more loud in class. She is a bit quiet. Quiet. Okay, well, I guess I haven't been participating a lot in this class. Either way, I didn't think much of it. So we move on to the next teacher, and we continue talking until she goes, Cholvan is a bit quiet in class. I wish she spoke up more. Quiet. There it was again. We move on to the third teacher, the fourth, the fifth, the last one of the day, and all I kept hearing was, quiet, needs to speak up more, doesn't participate enough. I think at this point it is safe for you to assume that I did not talk much in school. I would maybe ask a question here or there, but overall I kept to myself. It wasn't on purpose, it's just something that came naturally to me. But teachers noticed, and they noticed that it was different. It was different because the image we have of a typical high schooler is non-stop talking. We think about high school and see crowded classrooms with a roar of overlapping voices and laughter. I didn't fit the norm and was called out on it. Eventually, I was left wondering, is being quiet bad? Is me not talking for hours on end unacceptable? Do I have to change the way I am in order to stop being called out by teachers for something that comes so naturally to me? As a confused ninth grader, I tucked those thoughts away and almost forgot about them. Until I had to move again, to a new school, to another parent-teacher conference. Now this time, I didn't hear the word quiet. I heard an encouraging, speak up, and not from the teachers, but from myself. I don't talk for hours on end. I don't usually raise my hand in class, and I don't constantly make jokes in the hallway. I am quiet in school. I am not the first to speak. I like to keep thoughts to myself. I'm an introvert. An introvert on a TEDx stage, nonetheless. <laughs> and today, I am speaking up for all the quiet boys and girls who have been labeled into shyness, labeled as inadequate, labeled into being too quiet. I am speaking up for all the students in a classroom who have been overlooked by teachers simply because they did not talk as much in class. And finally, I am speaking up for everyone who have heard the word quiet addressed to them one too many times. People like this, people like me, introverts, were often regarded to as the shy ones, the calm ones, the quiet ones. Susan Cain, the author of the book Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, states in her official TED Talk that introverts make up a third to a half of the world's population. That's the same amount of people as the populations of China, India, and the United States combined. And despite our large presence, introverts are not being acknowledged enough. Teenagers as a whole have been boxed into this one category of loud for way too long. And despite changing technologies and teaching methods, some students were left behind. By overlooking the fact that introverts exist, schools suppress such individuals, causing them to feel even more isolated. Schools should be encouraging introverts to embrace who they are while also helping them navigate such a talkative world. 
Modern companies are already realizing the potential introverts have and the power they bring to the workspace. They are changing the way they are structured in order to become more welcoming to their introverted employees. Major corporations such as Google have already put less significance into job interviews when recruiting new employees, while Amazon now begins each meeting in silence, with attendees reading a memo on the topics needing to be discussed. However, schools are still hesitant to make concrete changes towards introverts. They have for years been focusing on catering to the different learning types, whether it be visual, auditory, verbal, or physical. Teachers have been taught to diversify their lesson plans in order to cater to the different types of learners. Yet the existence of extroverts and introverts is known, but somehow rarely addressed. My typical school day would probably include a lecture, a video, a hands-on activity, a few worksheets, and a lot of discussion. Teachers balance out the amount of time we are listening or watching. They create a healthy balance of activities. There is so much variety in the way we comprehend and get information, yet there is only one set way I have ever been told to process it. And it has always been through discussion or talking to a partner. In fact, I could probably easily count the number of times in my three and a half years of high school where I had the time to reflect on a certain topic in class quietly and by myself. I want to see a balance in the way I can learn in a classroom. A balance where I don't have to force words out of my mouth. A classroom where I can learn new things and not feel incredibly drained. Because people might think I'm quiet, but when I'm not talking, I'm looking. Looking at the colorful posters advertising clubs and activities in school, or looking at the hand of the clock, slowly moving. People might think I'm shy, but when I'm not talking, I am feeling, feeling my own heartbeat beating in my chest, or feeling the breeze of someone so much taller than me walk swiftly into the opposite direction. Extroversion and introversion occur on a spectrum, so it is hard to completely define one type of person versus another. There are no hard-cut lines to a person's personality, but one personality trait cannot be valued over the other. Introverts deserve to be recognized as the essential members of classrooms, schools, and communities. We may not boldly stand out, but we are important and deserve to be heard. Being quiet is not a disadvantage. It is a trait that makes one significant and important. It is a trait worth cherishing and praising and not tearing down at parent-teacher conferences. I hope that one day, introverts will be recognized as the valuable community members that they are. Schools will support them and their way of understanding the world. Their opinions will be valued and respected. Until that point in time, introverts like myself will struggle to speak up and make our voices heard. But we will overcome what most people regard as a disadvantage in order to allow those who follow us a chance to make themselves heard in this loud world. And now, let's take another look. I spoke up, but did you listen? Thank you.